Thank you for joining us today for our Tools for Life virtual workshop, Painting Like a Pro with Dave. Joining us today are two very special guests, our very own Dave Metzger, Loudon Habitat for Humanity Construction Manager, and Loudon Habitat Board President Allison Metzger, wife to our painting aficionado Dave. This dynamic duo will guide us through tips and techniques of painting the interior of a home like the pros do. Allison and Dave, thank you for joining us and I'm handing it over to you. I'm here with Dave in our basement and we've already got um, all of our tools out and a, and a wall prepped to give you guys some pointers on the best way to paint. If you've never painted before, it's not as scary as it seems. And if you've painted a few times in your life, maybe you'll learn a couple other techniques and tips uh, that we have found works over the years. Um, so I'll just go ahead and get started and um, have Dave explain to us kind of what are the first steps to start thinking about when you're getting ready to paint a room in your house. Yeah, the, fir the first thing you want to do is, is uh, look at your wall that you want to paint or your walls or ceilings or what have you. You want to take care of any holes that you have in the wall by mudding them up, caulking them in, sealing them up or whatever. Um, a lot of new construction around here has what is sprayed on paint. Um, they actually take a spray rig and, and, and paint that. In the event you do have a house that has been sprayed, I highly recommend that you prime the walls prior to any work that you have. Um, so that way you'll, you'll get a good coverage, you won't have the highs and lows, and what we as painters call bleed through, where the wall just absorbs the paint, leaves spots in it and stuff like that. I try to prime as much as possible unless I'm going with the same color or something close to it overwards. Um, we basically have primed this wall, we prepped it, we got it ready to do a couple demonstrations today. Um, what we want to talk about is how much paint covers. A can of paint will basically cover 400 square feet, which is an average size room, probably let's say 12 by 12 room. You can cover the walls with one gallon of paint. Sometimes it'll bleed through, you'll have to do a second coat, but that should get you one coat in a 12 by 12 room to cover all the walls and stuff that you have. Um, so basically you can go by, if it's twice that size room, you'll need two gallons, but it does cover 400 square feet, uh, give or take. You know, there is a little bit of loss, a little bit of this or that. There are a lot of factors that go into painting as far as drying and stuff like that. It's humidity, air temperature, stuff like that. So just realize when you do put paint on that it may take a little longer than what the can says to dry. And that might be that the humidity is high in your house or something like that. Usually you can do a second coat in about four hours, but we're going to get on to what we need to as far as starting the job. So you want to look at your walls, take care of your problems that you have, make your walls as smooth as possible, sand them down, prime them up, make them look good. This wall's been primed and sanded and ready to go. Just remember, after you do all of your prep work, always take a wet rag, wipe your walls down, get all of the dust off that you created through all of the work, because if you don't, it's going to get in your roller and it's just going to leave spots all over your wall. So I always recommend wiping down prior to applying your, your coating of paint. Um, there are various types of paints. There's flat, there's a flat mat, there's a, a eggshell, and there's semi-gloss. All of those have, have uh, different functions. Your semi-glosses are used in your bathrooms, your kitchens, where your humidity is a little bit higher, where you're going to get grease on the walls, where you're going to have high traffic areas, and the semi-gloss you can wipe off. Flat, everybody has a problem with when you wipe it, it wipes the paint off. They actually have now what's called a flat mat. It's a new product out by Home Depot. Its coverage is really good and its durability is a little bit better, and it's about the same price as flat. The eggshell is something that, that is used. It's a shinier paint. The durability of wiping is a little bit better. But just remember, when you get above flat and stuff like that, any flaws that you have on your walls are going to show up when you paint. So you have any irregularities like uneven walls or something, you put the shiny paint on it, it's going to show. If you don't want that to show, stay with your flat or something like that. Um, there's various primers out there that you can use. People use kills as primer. People buy primer. Some people go to where the Home Depot has what is called the Oaks paint, which is a paint that was mixed that was incorrect that has a primer base in it. And you can also use that as a primer, and you can get that a lot cheaper than a can of primer. Um, whenever you prime a wall, 
I always try to tint. The reason that we didn't tint this is because we wanted to show you how it's going to paint. But I always tint my primer a shade off of, of what my color, primer color is going to be. So let's, I'm going to go dramatic and say we're going to use a Chinese red paint, which is a real dark red paint. I would almost use a pink uh, tint in my um, primer as a base over top of it. That way you're going to get better coverage and you're not having that white shine through this. Your primer is a really white color. Um, let's step into what needs to be done now that we've prepped the wall, wiped it down, got it ready to paint, sealed all the holes up that we have. It's all sanded out, it's all smooth, all of our terms caulked, all of our prep work is done. First thing you want to do is get a drop, get a good drop down. There's various types of drops. Of course, you have the plastic drops, which are good, and then you have the cloth drops, which are the larger drops that will drop a bigger area. I always recommend the cloth drops over any of the uh, plastic because if you do get paint on this, the, the, of course the cloth material is going to absorb it. Where it just lays here, you end up walking across it and tracking it through through your uh, job area. And isn't it true that those are pretty much not reusable? Correct. The cloth drop you can use for years. Yeah, the cloth drops that I have. Uh, this is a newer one, but I have some cloth drops that are like eight to nine years old. You know, you get the bigger ones and they'll cover a whole room area. And I just shake them out, uh, dry them off, and every now and then throw them in the washer and dryer. I don't recommend washing and drying them at home. I would take them to a commercial washer and dryer and dry them. Um, but you want to get your drop down. You want to get it good in the corners. You want to want to get everything prepped and ready to go. There's various types of brushes. You know, you go down the brush aisle, there's a whole bunch of different brushes. You have brushes that are flat. You have brushes that are angled. And all of these brushes have a purpose. Can you show us that flat one here? Yes, this is just a regular three inch flat brush. All my brushes I use are three inches. I just prefer a three inch brush. This is an angled brush. Of course, the angled brushes are great for cutting in. And these will cut in too. But the bigger brushes, they hold more paint and they seem to go a little bit farther than the little two inch brushes or inch and a half. Everybody thinks when you have to do the trim, you gotta have a little brush. It just doesn't hold a lot of paint for you to be able to, to really put it down. So I prefer the three inch brushes, but it's all whatever your preference is or whatever your hand's comfortable with. There are various types of rollers and various types of uh, thickness of the rollers and those have a purpose too. So basically what we have, what I use a lot for the walls that we have, which is just drywall painting, I just use a 3 8 map uh, roller. I use a 9 by 12 that's basically what everybody uses. They also have what is called a 4 inch 3 8 snap roller, and then we have what we call a hot dog roller. Um, these are basically great to have. You should always, if you're going to paint and paint a lot in your house, get one of these. Because like when you're painting behind the toilet or something, you don't have to pull the toilet. These come with real long arms and you can actually get in tight areas to where you don't have to pull the toilet or pull stuff and be able to paint behind it. Like you can pull your fridge out, get behind it and paint with one of these rollers to one of the bigger rollers uh, won't work. Um, of course, paint pans come in every phase, every size, everything under the sun. We use your basic one that uses for a nine inch roller and we always put liners in them that way we can reuse the pans it's cheaper to get the inserts as opposed to it is the uh, pans. Um, I prefer using the DAC caulk and the reason for this it's an acrylic latex caulk plus it has silicone in it so that that just means the durability is 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 a lot longer than everything else. And this is good for inside or outside. And what would you be using that caulk on in a room like this? Uh, for around your trim, between your trim and your walls, even though you think the trim is tight to the walls, there are gaps in it. So that's what you kind of caulk in. And the reason that you do that is it gives you a flow from one to the other with the irregularities in the wall. Around all of your trim is all caulked in around your windows. And that just keeps some air gaps and stuff like that. Your doors are all caulked in around your trim and stuff like that. Plus where you have joints in it is caulk. So that is a very good caulk. Alex is what I like to use. Um, and it's a good product and it's priced good and it's paintable. Just let it dry a little bit, let it harden up before you paint on it. They have various tools for, for people that, are, that do not like cutting in. These are for cutting in corners. These are for cutting in uh, ceilings and stuff like that. 
and we'll show you how these are used later. Um, that's about it as far as tools that need to be used to paint, unless you're going to be spraying, which is a different thing. So what about that tool that you're sitting on? Um, this is a scaffolding. I prefer a scaffolding as opposed to a ladder. There are great painting ladders. This is one of them. And the reason that this is a good ladder is that you put this up against the wall and it holds you out and it kind of gets where you can lean into your work as opposed to your balance being off center. So this gives you a place to put your legs to lean in to do your cutting. Me, myself, I prefer a scaffolding because when you're up on a scaffolding, you can actually reach this far to this far so you're not moving that ladder constantly. So the scaffolding for me is a win-win. It's lockable, it doesn't move, and I can paint a broader area as opposed to moving a ladder, moving a ladder, moving a ladder. And um, what's even better is when you have someone help you move your ladder. Yeah, your exactly. That's right? nice. The nice <laughs> thing about this, this is a lockable. These run about a hundred bucks and you can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, Tractor Supply, a lot of places have them. And you can put the steps to whatever height you want, to whatever ceiling you think you're in. Of course, this is a 10 foot ceiling, so I gotta have it about two foot up to reach. Um, drops down, walls prime, everything's ready to go. So what we do first is start cutting in. Wait, you wanna show us how to do pour up paint first? Sure. Where's the paint right there? <laughs> All right, people always make the mistake when they pour up paint. This is a very important thing that you need to know. Whenever you're pouring paint up, it's going to sound silly. Always open a paint with this. That way you don't mess the lids up to where if you have to seal it up, your paint can will seal back. If you take a screwdriver and gouge it, it doesn't seal. Show us the thing you use. Okay. No, show us the key. This is, a, this is a paint opener. You can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, they give them to you. And it, what it does goes right in there and pops the, the lid off. But it doesn't tear the seal up. So when you put your paint back, it'll seal up. You won't have the problem of air in your paint drawing. When you get a paint can, all your information's on the front. These are all different. All your writing on the back is the same on any paint can. So when you pour paint up, never pour on the front side. So you'll know that this is eggshell, medium base, stain blocker, paint and primer, and it's bare paint. So you'll be able to match it up. Always try to leave this code off as possible, because if you ever have to go back, get another can, they'll be able to match it up. If not, now they have a photo thing where you can match it up. And then the show them what you wrote on the front of it, on the lid. On the lid, I always write on the lid what room it goes to. So this says basement. So I know that this is what I painted in the basement. That's just for me, because we paint our house all the time, so. And I always pour to this side of the paint because this writing is always the same. And this tells me what my paint is. So whenever you're painting, whenever you're pouring, whenever you're pouring, go ahead, pour your paint, angle it up, tilt your can back, take your brush, wipe it. And then when you get it inside your lid, just take your brush, spin it out, do it a couple times. And then you can put the lid back on your gaps there. Your, your paint can will seal back up. But always pour to the label side that says the same thing on every paint can. Never pour from the front. All right. What we're gonna do is start cutting in. I'm gonna show you how to cut in. This is a cup pot. The reason I like these cup pots, it has a liner inside. But then also you can take some of it out and it has a magnet here to hold your brush so your brush doesn't get wet. You never want any more paint any higher than halfway up on your brush. That way your brush will be able to flow. You get it all up inside here. Your brush doesn't work as well. Don't worry, your assistant will pick up all that stuff. <laughs> Basically what I do is do a line, get my brush to where it's flowing. Then what I do is I angle the brush into the corner and drag it straight down the line. See how it feathers up and just stays tight into that wall? And that'll give you a perfect cut seam. Come back the other way. Cut it back in the other way. 
You can go straight down that line and make a straight line every time. Then I pull it down a little bit, so when I roll, I only roll up to here, and there's not a chance I bump the ceiling. And the court is over here where everybody has a problem. Take your brush, load it, push it up into the corner, and then pull it this way. Get that tip all the way up in the corner and then pull it down. Straight down just like you did on the ceiling. And that line will be straight every time. Okay, so that's how you cut in without using anything. All right, we're gonna to go to the other side of the room. I'm gonna show you a tool that's used for people that don't pay normal time. Always have a rag when you use one of these tools. And it's this tool right here. It's very, real good. And all you do is put it in the corner. Put it in the corner, hold it tight to the corner. Take your brush, and just pull it right up to that corner like that. And this one you can go back and forth. And there's your corner cut real easy, nice and neat. Take your rag, wipe the paint off. Move it up and then go back in and paint again. This is whatever we do whenever we do our um, team builds and we have people come in and paint. This is how I show them to paint corners. This will work on the ceilings, this will work on the walls, and this will work on the trim. So your trim's right here. You just basically go right across there, pull it out, and now you have a nice straight line. Okay. All right. All right, good. Well, you can go back and finish all that trim for us later. So what we're going to do now is change from this to a roller. And I like to use a pole whenever I roll. The reason for it is I'm able to stand back and look at the paint a little bit better than I would if I was standing up on top of it. Hey Dave, when you paint, what's your favorite type of music to listen to while you're painting? You only listen to country music when you paint. <laughs> Why is that? Because <laughs> that's the only station I allow them to play. <laughs> what you want to do is get your, your roller to where it's even all the way through. You want to come down at an angle, take it, turn it on its side, and roll this edge up right here. See how the edge has been rolled out? Then you want to come back into here. And don't push it, let, the, let, let it work itself. And just simply roll back into that paint that you just applied to the wall. And what letter are you supposed to make when you're putting, applying paint to the wall? Ooh. It's either a B or a W. It's a B or a W, I forgot. <laughs> it, takes a, it takes the roller a little bit for it to get flowing real good. So just pull this down, turn your corner up, go back in. And don't push on your roller, let your roller work. If you can see my hands are not gripping the roller real tight. And make sure you keep your roller flat against the wall. And your coverage will be good. All right, you don't see any lines on the wall because I've rolled this corner out. If you don't roll the corner out, you get all these lines in there. All right, always look back. Make sure that you didn't miss nothing. We got a little dust right there. Um, Always look back before you get going too far. And you recommend only doing like a small section, like half and half, like Correct. like top half, bottom half. There's your little BW. Yeah. I'm just doing this to show you how to roll when you get down low. When you get down low, then you want to take your roller off. 
You're going to give it a straight edge down into your cut line. This is a cut, but if it was cut, that would be how you roll the bottom up. You don't want to try to roll down and hit your trim. That's it. Just keep an eye on what you have. Make sure you don't have what we call string lines. As you can see, my coverage is good. Everything's good. And then you can just take off on it and roll it up. And something Dave taught me was to make, I, I never seem to have enough paint on my roller. He always tells me I'm dry rolling, which is not a good thing. When you hear that sound of the roller sort of like scratching against your wall, that means you're really taking more paint off the wall than putting on the wall. So it's better to have more paint on your roller than less most of the time. You only want to roll back into that line that you put on because you're actually taking this paint and applying it to the wall. And as you can see, the coverage is good. Everything looks good. It's about all I got. <laughs> Eric, is it, are there any other questions that the viewers have or that you can think of that we... Dave did not address. Oh, you're muted. I can't hear you. Tara, you're muted. I'm muted. I'm unmuted now. Um, so I do have a question. A lot of our viewers have learned a lot and they're just so grateful for all of this information. And yes, Dave, your wall looks very well covered. And you did that a lot faster than I could ever accomplish that section of a wall. So thank well, you. Well, that's the thing is everybody tries to like hold the roller very tight and force it. You got the roller's only going to apply so much paint. But when you put that when you put that line going across, that's the paint you're applying to the wall. It's not what's really on the roller. It's what you put on that line going across. So if you stay within like a two foot by four foot box, your coverage will be perfect, and your paint will be one coat. As you can see, there's no lines, everything's good, and it flows straight through in the consistency. It's all about being consistent when you paint. Um, I yeah, just well, quickly asked a really good question, which um, is, do you ever tape your walls off when you're painting? And what are the benefits of taping versus not taping? I don't use tape, and the reason for it is um, a lot of times you end up tearing the drywall. And another problem is, even though you put the tape on the best that you can, the paint still gets behind it. And that won't give you this line that you get from just doing a brush. But if you learn how to put that brush and just float it in, it'll give you a line. You can stay within that. If not, these tools are great. That line right there is really good. You just gotta remember to wipe it down, keep it clean. So when you take it to the next point, you don't take that paint to that next thing. So that's why I always have a rag, wipe it, do the next coat. They actually have one that is uh, four foot long by about a foot wide with a two foot handle that you can actually stick up to the ceiling and just paint if you have an eight foot ceiling and can reach it. But these tools are really good for all of your trim. You can even go around your, your outlets, whatever, um, to, to, to cut in. And believe it or not, once you use this a couple of times, it'll be so fast and so clean. And these, believe it or not, it's like six dollars. They're not that expensive. And you Seems can get them to whatever. <laughs> yeah, it is. You just gotta keep it clean. It's just like tape. And the problem is that when you pull the tape off a lot, your paint comes with it. You know, and then if you leave it too long, it, you know, I just I taped for a long time and I got better and we don't tape. So I would rather use these tools than tape. It's less expensive and less uh, um, tearing your wall up. As long as you keep it clean and keep it wiped, you'll be good to go. Speaking of investments, paintbrushes are really expensive. I know you always really like to use an, you know, an, a better quality paintbrush. Um, right. So what's the difference between the paintbrushes? The better quality paintbrushes, the hairs don't fall out. They stay together good and they clean good. Like I always bring the brushes home and I clean them. Like you can see this brush, has been used numerous times. Um, and all I do is take them home, clean them, take a wire brush, scrape them out, put a little bit of dish soap, scrape them out again with a wire brush and rinse them. And then I hang them to where they air dry. 
So when you get done, there'll be a little stiff, but when you shake the bristles, it'll be like a brand new brush. Again. What's your little trick for um, if you're painting with the same color again? Um, oh, okay. Like if I, if I painted today and like say I had to stop and do something and then come back and do this tomorrow, all you got to do is leave your brush like it is right here, put it in a sandwich bag, put it in your fridge. It won't dry and you're able to paint with it tomorrow. Oh, that's a great you tip. Have the roller as well. Like if you're painting and something comes up, your kid's got to do something or something, you can just leave them in the refrigerator and reuse them again. But you well, that's better than roller. washing and waiting for them to dry. So that's a great, right. great right. advice. Like if you're painting a big area and you just get tired, you know. But the thing about painting is just take your time. Don't try to rush it and you'll be just fine. Use the tools that they have. Learn how to use the tools. You can always start in a corner, practice, 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 and then, and then you'll be able to, to paint with no problems. That's great. Dave, any tips on painting the ceiling before we wrap this up? Yeah, if you're painting the ceiling, everybody, when people paint a ceiling, they do this. I mean, and I, and I don't understand it. They want to paint like this, right above their head. You don't paint a ceiling like that. These things actually extend out. All right. So what you want to do when you paint your ceiling is paint it away from it. That way you're not staying up like this, hurting your shoulders. You can go like this a whole lot easier than you can do this. Your shoulders aren't hurting and your neck's not hurt. So if you just stand back and paint your ceiling like this, it's a whole lot easier than trying to do this all day. So just step back on your painting and uh, when you do the ceilings. When you do the ceilings, I recommend getting the plastic taping it just to keep your splatter off of your wall. Um, another question, good question asked was, um, how long should you wait to paint in between two coats and how do you know if you don't have two coats? Okay, let, let's decide if we need a second coat. First of all, you should let it dry a minimum of four hours, unless you can prove that it's not tacky by touching it or whatever. As a painter, Yes, we push, we try to do a second coat real quick. We'll try to do it within two hours. But it all depends on the humidity. Perfect examples, I'm in the basement. It's been cold outside. The ground's damp because of all the rain that we have. So therefore, this is gonna take a while to dry. It's all gonna play into that. I would wait four hours and then you could paint a second coat. You know, but you'll know when you go to paint it, how it flows like that. If it's real, if you go to paint it and it's really sticky, then it's wet. If it's not rolling like it like it should be, then you know you need to just stop. But I, I would I would wait, you know, three to four hours before I did a second coat. But usually, if you're painting a room, by the time you get around, it's about three hours. You can almost start back over if you did a room this size, which is fifteen. That's good hours. news. I thought it was much longer. I thought you would have had to wait twenty four hours. No, not really. Not for a second coat. Okay. You can put it on quick. You know, it all, it all depends on how it's drying. But there's things you can do to make it dry, too. You can put fans on it. You can do a lot of stuff. But just remember, you put fans on it. Now you're creating dust and stuff that could get in your room. So I always recommend just letting it dry. That's a good tip. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Okay. Thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, busy construction manager job at Loudon Habitat for today's workshop and sharing sure. all of your insights. Today, and, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all on a day's work, right? <laughs> and Allison, thank you so much for uh, joining Dave and asking all of those great questions. We really appreciate your time. And on behalf of the Tools for Life workshop virtual series at Loudon Habitat for Humanity, thank you for your time and join us next week for Demystifying Six Habitat for humanity myths.